and sleeping okay so instead of me getting up every two hours i was getting up every three hours and now they will sleep a stretch of five hours at a time um so we doing good because i'm telling you mommy be tired um so yeah so since i've had the twins i have been having extreme mood swings um when I was pregnant, I really didn't have that many because I was pretty much asleep my whole pregnancy. I had a horrible pregnancy. I was sick all the time. I lost 72 pounds. Yes, that is a, I don't know how, but that is what I lost when I was pregnant with my twins. After I gave birth, I have um, I gained back about six pounds, and i just been staying in that area. Um, so after I had them, I started feeling low, you know, but it was mostly because I was having a horrible recovery from my C-section, you know, and I knew that was most of it. And then my babies were in the hospital. They were in the NICU for two weeks. Thank the Lord it was only two weeks because I have encountered families that have been in the hospital for six months. Uh, one of my friends that I actually met when I was pregnant, um, she was pregnant with twin girls also and her babies were born in July and they weren't due until October like mine weren't due until October mine were born in August and her babies barely came home and it's November so I was very lucky my children came home two weeks after they were born one second one of my twins are crying I'll be right back So, uh, yeah, I was very fortunate that our children came home when they did. And we were ready because we actually ended up moving into the Ronald McDonald house and we stayed in Greenville where our girls were. And um, it was rough, you know, um, especially, you know, me getting up every two hours to pump. My husband, he was stressing uh, about our girls' well-being. And then our youngest, she had already been away from home for a few months because like I said I had a really horrible pregnancy and um I was I was bedridden I couldn't really do anything so everybody came home at the end of August early September and we've been doing great right now our whole family has a cold but that's not a big deal okay that's Zoe she's uh our night owl um but yeah, that's another thing. Sorry. When you're bipolar, you get sidetracked a lot. So if I am all over the place, I apologize ahead of time because I really can't help it. I'm going to get to every point. I just might not get there when I start the point. Okay, so um, yeah, being a mother and having bipolar depression is slash mania is actually very hard. Um, you know, being a stay-at-home mom is hard in its own right. You know, I've been a stay-at-home mom for five years. Um, and in between, I would work, but still majority, I would be home. But um, I've been strictly a stay-at-home mom since February. I used to work at the jail here as a cook, and I loved that job. But, um, you know, I had a very high-risk pregnancy with my twins, and so it was either work and I could possibly lose them or I go strictly bed rest and also I had a massive nervous breakdown so when I was taken out of work I actually was taken out by a psychiatrist because I ended up uh, in the mental institution I was there for two weeks um, in February and I was still pregnant at the time so it was very hard finding a medication that I could take that would not affect my pregnancy, that was, you know, um, safe for pregnancy, safe for my children. And I did find one, but the doses I needed, my body could not accept. Um, I needed 40 milligrams, but I could only tolerate 20. Whenever I took 40, I would always throw up immediately um, and then continue to throw up for an hour. And so... I ended up discontinuing the medicine after I got out and it was really hard on me and my husband because the main reason why I got on the medication was because I started cutting again and that is a very dangerous thing 
I mean, you know, suicide is very real. Suicidal thoughts are very real. And, you know, necess not necessarily cutting is not necessarily trying to commit suicide, but it can ultimately lead to suicide. So I recommend if you are cutting, if you feel like you need to cut to relieve stress or to deal or cope in any way, you need to get help. Trust me, I've been there. And it's, it takes every ounce of you to not do it. Even when you're better. Because that's the easiest way to cope if that's the way you've been coping. You know, for someone that does drugs, another hit is the easiest way. For me, honestly, I just used smoking to not cut. I started smoking, and whenever I felt stressed or whenever I felt upset, I would... One second. Sorry, that was the other twin, Chloe. Okay, so, yeah, whenever I feel angry, overwhelmed, or anything, I would just light a cigarette, boom, and I would be good. Um, and it's definitely not a healthy decision. It's not the healthiest way to cope, but I find it's the only way that I can deal without medication, without, you know, um, alcohol without cutting without anything that's gonna harm me or my children well smoking will harm me eventually because i mean you know but i'd rather smoke than cut basically that's what i'm saying though that's my advice i choose to to smoke cigarettes other than to harm myself and i had went a long time without cutting before that incident and you know in therapy, you know, she tells me everyone backslides. But for me, that was the biggest backslide I could have had because it had been years since I cut. And not only that, but not a lot of people know that I actually did cut because, of course, it's not something you broadcast. But um, it was something I couldn't hide. My husband had never seen me cut before, and he actually is the one who found me cutting. I was literally in this trance. I could not... All I could do was cut. All I wanted to do was cut. I was sitting there just cutting my arm. And, you know, it, it sucks, but that's it's life. It's what happened. And, you know, I don't mind putting myself out there because you guys might bash me in the comments. You might call me stupid in the comments. You might feel like, what was I thinking? One second. But I know that somewhere out there, there is somebody who needs to hear this video. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, also, I struggled when I came back. I struggled just finding the willpower to care. Um, it didn't make it any better that I was on bed rest with my pregnancy and I was so sick because I some honestly there were times where I wouldn't even leave the bed like my husband used to have to be like babe are you gonna shower today sure like it was one of those moments like I know that's trifling but I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep it 100 on this channel I'm gonna be real with you it's gonna be cutthroat it's gonna be things that you know most people wouldn't say that's just who I am if you know me you know that that's me but um so Going through this pregnancy was hard, and I decided that it was going to be my last pregnancy. Um, I had planned on getting my tubes tied during my C-section because I had to get a C-section. I didn't have a choice. Um, my daughter, baby A, who is Zoe, she was breached my whole pregnancy, talking about a kick in the groin. And then on top of that, Chloe, baby B, she was transverse, which means she was sideways and baby A was head up yes tragic um so there was no way i could deliver them naturally and um being that i was already high risk they weren't willing to take that chance crazy part is i still ended up dying during delivery um i actually died during my c-section 
but thank the lord they brought me back and baby b which is chloe she also died but they brought her back uh so yeah uh i was in the hospital for three days and then i got to go to the same hospital my daughters were at um because i actually delivered them in a different city and they were medevac to um the intensive care unit um, for infants their age they were born at 33 weeks and three days so being a bipolar mother with mania and anxiety who has just delivered twins she has not seen i actually saw each of them for two minutes before they got medevac and that was not enough i didn't get to touch my babies they were in their um incubators and so needless to say as soon as i got um discharged the first place i went was to their hospital and i finally got to see them and of course i cried um just seeing them with all the tubes and you know in the little um incubator and i couldn't hold them um well i couldn't hold zoe i had to hold chloe for 30 minutes because she only could be out for 30 minutes i actually got to hold her and then you know gradually over the two weeks i got to feed them and then i got to latch them on you know it was just you know little steps but um through it all my husband was he was my support system he was my rock he was right there you know luckily his job let him you know um take the time off and they gave him the whole time the girls were in the hospital off and you know um pretty much we just worried about them getting home and their recovery and it was fast and they both came home the same day and they've been you know they've been basically the same same weight same temperament um except the only thing is their sleeping's off zoe's our um baby a she's our night owl she always been even in the womb she will be turning up at one in the morning for no reason and chloe is our sleeper she will sleep no matter what it is day or night she is she our sleeper um she's just our chill baby she takes that what's funny she takes after her father and zoe takes after me so um yeah um so having now five children it is very hard um especially my oldest two i don't see them as much as I would like, honestly. Um, and, you know, my first marriage was, it was a bad divorce, you know. We separated and um, for different reasons and it just wasn't a good relationship, but we had two beautiful children. And even though our marriage didn't work out, you know, he's a great father. He's always put our children first. And when we separated, I wasn't in a good place. Like I said, I was um, not who I am. You know, I was in a manic state, but at the time I didn't really know. But of course, um, you know, things get bad when you're divorcing. And so he decided that he would use my mental disorder against me. And he has our children. So instead of losing them completely I decided it was best to just give in and it sucks but that's what happened um but you know we're we're we've matured with age and you know at this time we were young so I'm grateful to say that now looking back in hindsight that it's probably best that they are where they are because they have a stable parent and my children don't know that I'm bipolar. You know, I can't really explain it to them because they're so young. So, um, my it's really sad when my three-year-old will come to me and be like, Mommy, are you sad today? Please don't cry, you know. And I don't know how to tell her, like, you know, I'm not really crying because I'm crying, but I can't explain to her why I'm crying. And I don't want my daughter to feel like I'm sad all the time or she makes me sad. So, you know, I'll just be like, okay, I'm sorry, you know, and I, it's a lot of guilt when you're having a bad day and you're feeling down, especially as a stay-at-home mom, because you want to be able to play with your children, you want to be able to give them the attention that they need, and, you know, you can't, so, it's, it's hard, 
Um, being bipolar is not just a mental illness. It is a lifestyle. I say that because you have to be willing to put forth effort to manage your sickness in your life. You cannot just expect it to get better without that effort. And, you know, I'm putting forth the effort, but there are times where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just wish I was a normal person. And honestly, I don't know what normal is because I've been this way my whole life. I just now have a title for it. And is getting a title for it honestly gonna make it a little easier? <laughs> no. It's just easier to explain what's going on. Yes, love? Bye, hug. Oh, give me a hug. Love you. This is Lily. You want to say hi? Hi, this is Lily. And that's my baby sister. And this is your baby sister? Uh-huh. Okay. Daddy work. Yeah, Daddy. No, he's not at work, but go watch the TV, okay? Oh, you want to stay in here? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so there are times where it's, you know, it's a lot of guilt. It's a lot of shame, but I have to keep telling myself, you know, it's not your fault that you were born this way. It is not your fault that it's no cure, but it will be your fault if you decide not to continue to work on it, if you decide not to continue to better yourself. Um, Mom, I say hi. Yeah, I see. Oh, excuse her. I got to do it. But um, it is your fault if you give up on yourself. And, you know, through all of this, you know, I've had an amazing support system. And honestly, one of my closest friends I actually and met at work. She has went to almost every appointment. Um... You know, she'll um, daddy text good. me or call me. Daddy like, good. Are you call good? Me so daddy Do you good. Need to talk. If I call her and I sound off, and Jay, daddy what's wrong? Call me the vote. You sound and down today. And, call you know, me the and vote. I really appreciate her. I'm not gonna say her name because I don't think she wants, but she knows who she is. You know who you are. And you know, um, my husband drives me insane, but he has also been a great support system through this and very understanding. Now I know there's times where he's like, "Oh my God, I married the craziest person I could find." Um, but it is very difficult. And if you have any questions about my condition, about what's going on, anything you want to ask, you can ask in the comments. I will definitely reply. Um, because I'm, I know I haven't covered everything and I know I've been all over the place, but that's just my life, honestly. Like, you know, um, and Lily is... She's just going to take over because she's just going to keep waiting. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short. And I appreciate you guys tuning in and listening. Remember, if you do like this video, please thumbs up. If you want to continue hearing from me, go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> go ahead and subscribe. And hit the bell button. And thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. Yeah. <laughs>